Hey y'all, it's me, Niecy Lynn. This is the 10th of February. So if you haven't got anything for your Valentine, or if yourself, if you're on Valentine, which is fine, this is Floss Tube 162, but you better get in gear because Valentine's Day is in four days. Don't forget and get in trouble. There we go. I'm trying to get myself centered so you can kind of see some of the things behind me. I've been a little productive this week. I was productive this morning and uh, made myself finish FFOing some things. Um, we've had super social week. I've had just stuff in full like every day. So Monday, Micah and I went over to Mama's. It didn't work out on Friday. And so we ran over on Monday. That was her one day. She didn't have very many calls. So we fluffed up her room and kind of decorated it up, you know, uh, started merging out of winter into Valentine's spring a little bit, got her hair cut and ate some lunch. And so we had wore her out real good by the time we got her back home. I wanted to be sure she had to get her hair cut though because um, my aunt and uncle, her um, only siblings left that are living are twins they're the youngest and mama is the third of six and they were coming up to see her so i wanted to make sure her hair was done and everything before they got here so that she would look um her best and feel good about how she looked and so they were able to come up and surprise her she didn't know they were coming and so they were able just to go all the way to her little apartment room and knock on the door and surprise her there at the door. So that was super nice and she was excited and we had a good lunch with them. Um, none of my kids could come, but um, sister's youngest sister was there, myself, uh, Wayne and Lane are their names. And then uh, Shell Shell, my sister's youngest and her fiance Trey were able to come. So there was, um, you know, a good, and Mimi. So there was a good group of us there and we had a nice lunch and. Um, we talked to some nice people when we were leaving, so that was nice. And then Catch was here on Wednesday. We had all the fun on Wednesday. And then yesterday, Aria came to me after school. Why well, Kimmy goes to dance on Thursdays. Um, Mikey usually just takes calls or works in the car or something. So a lot of Thursdays, um, Aria will come over here and stay with me while Kimmy does dance. So. When, Kim, when Aria does dance, it's a shorter class because she's the grade behind and um, she's in kindergarten and Kimmy's in first grade and they go longer. They go like an hour and 15 or something. And then when Aria is also dancing is when Kimmy goes and takes piano lessons from Grandma Billy, so from James Williams' mama. So um, she was over here yesterday. We went in the Joann's and of course she is wanting to sew. And y'all know my sewing skills are minimal at best. So I'm trying to get her to start out with a little easy skirt pattern and she knows what she wants and she's drawn me a picture. I should have brought it. She wants it like with a peplum is from what I understand and from her picture. She wants a top with a peplum on it and some pants. So I couldn't talk her into starting off with skirt. We found an easy hoodie pattern. So she said she could start with a hoodie and maybe she'd just add some stuff on the bottom. Okay, baby. But we got leopard print. So yeah, that's on our agenda for the next couple of weeks. Ari, Kyle and I are gonna try to figure out how to um, sew her a hoodie with a peplum. So we won't be getting bored, that's for sure. So we have had all the stuff going this week and had a nice week and then tonight I'll have Kimi, Aria, like our normal Friday nights, and then Lily, um, our friend's little girl, who is right in between the girls. So I'll have a second grader, a first grader, and a kindergartner tonight, and then CJ and Wani are coming up from Houston to stay for the weekend. So then I'll have the three girls, CJ, Wani, and then the little pug, Luther, will be here. So we will have a full house, and it, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm like, um, James found that you know, you used to watch the 70 show. Well, now, you know, they had that 90 show. And he said, you're just like Kitty. And I'm just like, just like Red. He don't want nobody in the house, you know, just leave him alone, da, 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 da. And I'm like so excited that there are kids in the house and kids here again. And that makes me so happy. So 
that's right where we're at. I did, I have a couple of whips. I have um, two FFOs. Let's see here, whips. Um, FFOs. Oh, and a finish. And I do have a finish. So yeah. And I have left my FFOing mess out over there because this afternoon I'm framing Cricut Collection Winter. The frame got here from Art to Frames. I should have grabbed it, but I forgot. It's over there. Um, you can order them through Amazon for some of their stuff, not all of it, but that way if you find it on Amazon, you don't have to pay shipping. So, but it's called art to frames and a dot com, art to frame dot com, and you can go in there and custom design anything and they'll just send it to you. So that's nice. So it's here and that's on the agenda for while this is uploading, I'm going to start trying to frame winter. So I haven't got all caught up on my correspondence. I'm getting closer, but y'all just hang in there with me. Whips. Okay. Let's see here. I did work on North Wind a little bit, but I got sidetracked because I wanted to do a little bit of Valentine stitching. And I was trying to finish this ding dang snowflake that's about to push me over the edge. Y'all know me in diagonal stitching. Well, hi, Patty. Make yourself comfortable back there now. Patty is behind me in the chair back here. Getting all cozy. Are you cozy back there? Don't mind me. Never mind that I was first. Oh, careful. Hey, careful. What are you doing up here? Go sit down. Pat catches you up on this table, you're gonna be in trouble. Hey, get down off this table, you're gonna get in trouble. Come here. Come here, Patty, you wanna say hi? Come here. Where are you going? Uh-uh. Gotta be careful, you'll knock the camera over with your tail, with your tail. Oh, Patty. Her tail is catching on the camera thing. Come here. No, come here. Uh-uh, come here, go down. Are you getting down or are you coming over here to me? Okay, you're getting down, okay. Lord have mercy, everything like this took a tumble. So, I was working on Little House Needleworks, The North Wind. It is so much more beautiful than the picture. I stink and love it, but I started working on this snowflake and it was beating me up. I think it's the last one though. Yes, it's the last big snowflake. So if I can get to the end of the snowflake here, I have made it. This is um, with 40 count sea storm. And it is gonna be beautiful. I love that Robin, the snow shows up, the little snowflakes show up really, really pretty. See, is it all in there? There we go. But I do love it. I love stitching on it. I can't wait to get it finished. But it's those snowflakes. That'll be my last diagonal stitching though. Like bad diagonal stitching. When I have to do like snowflakes and things where you jump around and do, it is so rough for me. And so this one right here, I'm just nearly to the end of, and I think I got it right. I had to take part of it out to get it right again because my brain just does not like to work that way. But these colors and the fabric, it is just beautiful. Love, love, love it. That's North Wind by Little House Needleworks. It's been around a long time. Um, I don't know if it says the year on here, 2010. So I'm sure your LNS probably still has it, but it's gorgeous. But I will be glad to have it finished because it is um, my first 40 count piece. And it, which is fine, it's such a fine and I don't see it, it's not really any that much harder to see than the 36 to me, I'm, I'm okay with it. I didn't know if I would be okay with it, but I'm okay with it. But in retrospect, I probably should have started with a smaller, Piece the first time I did 40 count. 
right? So that's North Wind, which I forgot to write down. Okay. What's up there, Patty? What are you doing? Why aren't you taking a nap? Huh? You're used to taking a nap right now. I went and got out my Halloween rules um, I, by Lizzie Kate. I am afraid if I don't discipline myself, I will not get this guy finished. And once you get, I feel like once I get through the, and I'm doing the whole thing on one piece fabric, okay? And I feel like once I get through this top part, the rest of these will be much more enjoyable the Halloween rules, um, here again, the diagonals and all this is a bit of a beating. So I am just making myself power through the, the heading. So I did make a decent amount of progress on it, which does make me happy. Let's see if I can unroll it where y'all can see it. Mm -hmm. Cause of course I've got it. I stitch in hand, so I've got it all rolled up at the bottom and rolled in on the sides like that, right? So that works for me. But we're gonna try to put it on here, or maybe y'all can see it a little bit. Because it is stinking cute. Roll this guy down so I can stick him down here at the bottom. It won't be smooth, but you can tell what it's gonna look like. And I did get, I feel like I got a lot of progress done because I got the tree finished and I got two tombstones done, so half the grass done and another tombstone like outlined. So I feel like I did get a lot done on it. So I just have um, the two, three more tombstones, the R, U and the S the grass, and then writing the word Halloween life. So it's, let me see if I can stick this on here so you can see it. Watch me work. Look at that. So there is the whole piece, and then that's where I'm at. So you can see I just had the three more tombstones, the rest of the letters for Halloween, and half the grass left to go. And then I can start doing all the little rules. And I cannot wait. I wanted to stitch this piece forever. It's so cute. And I'm so excited to be stitching on it. That, um, I think, what did I grab for the, I don't have all the call for I think I just went and found some stuff that I thought would work. Yeah, they're mainly DMCs. Evidently I had the moss and the red rocks that it called for. And the rest are DMCs for the top portion. These are the colors just for that top little bit. I did not have, um, it calls for king mackerel or something for the tombstones. I just used frosted sage. So it it's kind of a blue, green, gray, and I think it looks fine on there. Theirs is a little more blue than mine, but it's okay. But I'm hoping to get um, done with that part because that is, well, let's be honest, it's not very much fun. It's just tombstones. And then next you have the little dog and the ghost and you have the candy bag and you have the haunted house and you have the sunflower and the crow and pumpkins and owls. I mean, you just go on and on and start stitching something really cute like every second after you get through that top piece. And I could have left the top piece off and you know, it, it would have been fine. It would probably been a lot easier and faster, but, um, Hmm. but it is the cutest piece and tons of people have stitched this but y'all know I love me some Halloween so I thought you know what I'm going to 
just bite the bullet and make myself get busy on this piece because I want it finished. I want to display it next year at Halloween and I do not want to have to be sad that I don't have it finished. And it's huge. I mean, it's huge. I think when it, if you stitch it all together, I don't know if it gives the stitch count in here or not. 6 by 2 and a half for each one. So that's what 18 inches long without the header. So here it is. Okay, hold on. 93 by 366 is the stitch count if you stitch it all together with the header. So that's, that's, I mean, that's a pretty decent, it's a long piece. But once you get into the, each little pieces, I think it'll go so much faster because you'll be excited to do the next little design, right? You'll wanna be getting on to the next little design, doing the next little design. So I thought, you know what? Just get in there and make yourself get busy with it. So I've stitched on it two knots this week, maybe. Yeah, to try to get it a decent amount of progress on it. So we're going to, we also stitched on Halloween rules. Okay, who else did we stitch on that we didn't finish? Okay, this was a start and I nearly finished. I thought I'd have a finish on it too, but I didn't. I didn't. Sad day. But it got close. Okay, here we go. Oh, dang, 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 dang. I forgot to just hold it. Hold it. Here we go. I'll leave that out of there. I'll be in a mess. Okay, I'm gonna put this guy back up. This is, and Lori sent me this last year. Um, hey, Lori. And it's so cute. It is a Merry Making Mini by Heart and Hand, and it just says love. It says Merry Making Mini Floral Heart is the name of it. And it is, um, I don't see the year on here, but I think I see people do them all the time. It's, I'm sure your LNS has it, but it is so cute. And I had a little scrap of, I'm the queen of buying these little things for a dollar when you're at your LNS and they have some little scraps that are a dollar. Count me in. I always grab them. They're fun to just stitch up a little something or to try and see if you like it. I think this was tin roof maybe. I'm not sure. I don't even know that it had a tag on it. It looks kind of like tin roof or a little darker though. But it is so cute. And I'll put this guy on here so you can see it. It calls for a bunch of different colors that I did not have. So I just did my own floss toss and got with it. These are what I ended up with. There's my red and a light pink and a dark pink and a green and a white and a brown. It's the color that it needed. Thought I would get done. So I just have to finish the top of the heart, filling it in, and then do the little border. There's a little single stitch border that goes around it. But it is so cute. So, so cute. And I think I'm going to um, make little ornaments for my Valentine tree. I've never used a, my little tree for a Valentine tree before, but I think next year I'm going to make some little smalls like this, and then I'll have some little ornaments on my little white birch tree and I will use it for a Valentine tree. But it is so stinking cute. And it's like stitching up crazy quick. I started it um, not before last and I stitched on a little bit then and a little bit last night. 
So it comes together real quick. I don't think I have any little pink seed beads like this has on here. So I'll either do nothing or just put some French knots. I don't know. Um, I'm not that, it's not that big a deal. So this will be finished probably tonight um, after the girls go to bed, if the girls go to bed, I hope. Hope at some point they go to bed because Kimmy's birthday party is at 9.30. So um, we'll have them here tonight and we'll get them ready and then take them over to the birthday party. Micah has to pick up Justin at the airport like at 10 tonight. So um, I hope they go to sleep so they'll want to get up and be in a good mood tomorrow. But yes, this is heart in hand. Mary making mini, and I think it says floral heart is the name of it. And see, they've done theirs in a little ornament with little wool. And I've never done mine like that with a like a pink edge. And they've got some little red and pink wool plaid around it. That is super cute. But I've never done any like that. Y'all have to let me know if you've ever done any wool like that. I've never done any wool like that. I've done felt, but I usually don't leave it showing. I don't know why. But I usually have it behind like this. Well, let's just sit here. I'm right about here because I ran in Ross this week to look for a frame, and I saw this guy. He was, I think, $3.99. And he's just a little stand like this. But... On the back of mine, this one will normally be tied onto that little blue bench with these strings. But I always put my strings behind back here. So you can't see them from the front. They're in between the felt and this piece. So your backing piece that has your fabric and your felt, I put my little strings always behind there. Then if I wanna put it, on a little stand or something. I just bend the little things up and you still can. It works the same on here. So it just gives you more options. So then I just take the little strings and poke them up under there. If I don't want to tie it on something. And they're fine. So that's how I usually do my felt. I don't usually have my felt out here where you can see it, I've never done that. And I don't know, I don't know why. I guess you would cut your backer board the same size as your top board. And then you would just paint, you would leave your wool sticking out further, your felted wool, and then just trim it up with your pink and shears and it would make like a little frame, I mean. But, and you don't forget when you run in discount places to look and see if you can find a little display piece like this because that worked. Fabulous. Fabulous. So this is uh, Mary making me. I should have written this down already, y'all. But I never do have enough time. I don't. If I'm telling you, I miss so much time sleeping. If you could like find a way to not sleep and not turn into a crazy person. Think of all the stuff you could get done. I mean, dang, think of it. Think of all you could get done if you did not have to sleep. I could probably take over the world if I didn't have to sleep. But I am loving stitching on that guy. It is nearly done. So I will have it finished. And then I got a finish on um, no, neither one of these I had started last week. My finish is Sweetheart by Heart and Hand. Okay, let me see if I can get it on the board. I, this would go okay in a three by five frame. I should have started stitching in the corner, okay? When there is a kit and it comes and I look at it and then I just wanna start stitching, I start stitching. And I, then I have all this extra fabric that I feel like is waste because I don't need it. That makes me sad. And that's what's happened here. This is Sweetheart 
my heart in hand. I pulled uh, just out of my stash colors. I didn't have the right ones, but I thought it was pretty close. It had that little button in there and you put the little straight stitch zigzags on, but it's so cute. And I put the year and my initials, you can see maybe it'll focus right down there in the very bottom. But this one was here again, super fast stitch, even though I had to take out my S and my HE because when I started doing the H, I went, I did this leg first and then put the other leg over here instead of putting the other leg over here. This is what happens when you're watching TV and your husband's asking you questions about the TV and about what's going on on the TV and then you look back down and start stitching again and boo boo. So it's on me for knowing that I need to pay better attention, but I didn't. So like I said, I should have come over here and started it and then I would have had this whole other piece. I don't know, not enough probably to do much of anything with, but I feel wasteful. I feel wasteful. I know a lot of y'all love a big border, but when then since I do my own finishing and then I just chop it off, I feel like, like I'm so wasteful when I do that because I don't use that to hold it in or anything. So I just feel like I'm like wasting so much material. So that is Sweetheart, my heart in hand. I had um, Weak Style Works Lancaster Red, Gentle Arts Shaker Bonnet, Gentle Arts Anti, Shaker Bonnet, Gentle Arts Straw Bonnet, Gentle Arts Anti Rose, and Classic Color Works Caterpillar. And I don't think I used the auburn. No, because I used the red. I used the red for the words. So I used the Lancaster red for my words. They had their sweetheart written in brown. And I writ, wrote my sweetheart in red. John Deere Green. See, that's where my brain goes. It always becomes some kind of crazy song. I wrote it in red. It made me think of wrote it in John Deere Green. And there you go. That's where we're at. Okay, our other FFO is, well, we'll go to this one next. I've FFO'd uh, Bent Creek Spring for me. I just um, put it on this was, you know, the fabric it came with. And then I had some green that was kind of the same color as the little worm. And it had those little buttons in there that is a worm and a ladybug and another ladybug. I decided I did straight stitches and bullion stitches and everything. I didn't like any of them in the middle of my flowers. So I just went back and put some buttons on there out of my button jar. So those are buttons from um, James Williams work shirts. I don't know what the little bitty buttons from though. But the other two are off his work shirts, I know. But I don't know where that what that little bitty tiny black button came off of. But it turned out fine. It is bright and cheery and it will brighten up things in her room till it gets sunny outside. And she'll like switching it around. But, and then like I said, this is how I just finish off the back. It's, I usually paint the edges of it, but I didn't on this one. I just cut it straight. And that covers up all your back where you fold it in your edges and everything. So it looks real clean and neat on the front and it looks real clean and neat on the back. The back doesn't matter, um, especially on pieces you don't take down all the time. But because I do switch mine out and take mine down and uh, she will move these around and move them around, I keep the back row clean. It also keeps it from getting caught and pulling loose or anything like that. So it's just, and this is just a piece, I mean, literally, I don't even, this is a rusty red, like a barn red. There's no barn red on the front really, but that's okay. It's on the back. It's just to keep it from snagging on stuff and be neat and clean back there. So that is Spring by Bent Creek. It was one of the shares from last week. And that's it, FFO'd. Now, okay, Anna said that Fat Quarter Shop does have some of the Bent Creek kits. She didn't find these two, 
I think I saw them at bentcreek.com, at least the pattern, if not the kit. But she said she did get the candy corn. And what other one? I can't remember what other one you said you got from Fat Quarter Shop last week. And they come with the fabric and it's just nice. It's a fun little stitch. You can get it finished and go on to enjoying it. The last FFO is um, A Merry Heart by Blackbird. It's an old one. I don't think it's in any of the books. Um, I think one of y'all even let me know for sure it wasn't in any of the books. This is what this is a frame I went in to find at Ross because they usually have like some five by just five by sevens. Their frame selection was really super low, but I did find this one. It's not perfect, but it is fine. This is a Merry Heart by Blackbird Designs. It is here. This is the way it's charted. And then I just changed it up and added some different colors to it. You get to learn the eyelet stitch on this one, which I already knew, but this is from their schoolgirl samplers that, told, that taught you a specialty stitch on each one. And I do love me some specialty stitches. So that one is on a 36 count vintage rose. And I love this color palette. I told Frankie she needed to sell this color palette just like as a group because I stink and love it. It is Autumn Sweater. These are all from Wicked Stepmother. Wooly Swamp, Harvest Moon, Shine On, Shine On, Harvest Moon, Eye of the Tiger, I'm not gonna sing that. Uh, Why Me Lord, I could go into all these except for the Eye of the Tiger and Violet and Blue. And I just love the way those look together. So pretty. That autumn sweater is enough for me to, um, feel like I know a lot of people use this color palette and that is very pretty but I feel like you need something out of the red family you need something with a little bit more red in there and to me that autumn sweater in there is just the ticket and so it doesn't look super valentiney so I can leave it out all and two of y'all let me know that I was right it was in Proverbs somewhere uh, Linda and Sharon said it's from, it's Proverbs 15, 15. And it depends on, um, like which translation. Some of them say a merry heart has a continual feast. Some of them say a happy heart or a merry heart is a continual feast. But, you know, basically it means like if you're always happy, you're never, you know, you're never wanting if you try to be happy. So, I love the way it turned out. I love the colors together. Of course, I loved doing the eyelet stitches. So, so fun. So this one works up really fast. There's not much to it. And I just got it on a piece of sticky board with some matting under it, batting, what, batting under it. And then stuck it in this frame. This one was either $3.99 or $4.99. So you can't beat that. Now, is it perfect? No, because this, um, it's wider than it is long, but it's not square. So a square would be just the same problem turned the other direction. So we're just going to no, not pay attention to the fact that it is not cut to fit it exactly um, and get on with it. I love it. I love it. I was so happy to have it done and finished. I'm gonna put it back here again. Will you sit right there and be good? Yes. So those are my colors for that. Oh, and before I forget, um, thank you, Julie. I, Micah took the card you sent for Lulu. She took it onto the house last night. And um, she made me this super sweet card for all of us. And it had a little, um, like a sketching of a Pomeranian on the inside. And it had a little paw print on the outside. It was so cute and um, so sweet. And the... Uh, Micah took it home with her, so I don't have it here to show. I do have, did get some more Happy Mail from um, Julie Sent. I opened my card ahead of time. She sent the girls some stickers, which I will see if they will help me use on my, um, to get my Valentine cards out. We'll probably work on that tonight. And then she sent them each a little card here. So 
those are there waiting for them. And then I got um, a postcard and a card from Gail in Northern Ireland. And this is so famous. I want you to look at this one called the Dark Hedges. Look at that. There, are, I'd love to go see each and every one of these places. So beautiful. But those dark hedges, the way they're going over each other, I love that. It looks like it goes on forever and ever, and you would be so safe. I would feel so safe tucked up in under there. That's why I don't like, um, like I know a lot of people like the desert and stuff. CJ loves the desert. I feel unsafe in the desert. I feel um, like so exposed in the desert, and I know that sounds nuts, but I find that very disconcerting to be the only, like the only thing like sticking out. There's like everything for nothing. So I feel like, and because it's tall, it doesn't click off my claustrophobia. I like being under trees and under things like that because I feel like there's, I'm outside and there's always enough air. There's always enough air outside. And she sent me this, this, it says just a brief little line and I, and I loved it because I'm going to show you it has all these little drawers on it. These little tassel ones, I mean, all this. So Gail sent me this beautiful postcard and this cute note from Northern Ireland too. So I got that this week, so that was super fun. So thank you, Gail. Now, is that all my stitching I had to show in my Happy Mail? I think, okay. Questions and comments, and then we will do um, shares from last week and this week. And I told y'all last week I forgot my iPad. And I told y'all I would show, several of y'all had asked to see um, the sheep them showing their sheep and let me get in here. Surely it's gonna be on here again. Please be on here. There it is. I couldn't get it last time. They fluff the legs up on them now, like, and it's crazy to me. Let's see which picture you can see it the best in. Here, I guess. Okay. We didn't used to do this when I showed sheep. We sheared everything down real tight. But now they, here they leave the hair on the bottom and they be fluffing the hair all out like that, right? And then here is Kelby showing one of them and she is upset because one of the ones, and they're at the fat stop showing Fort Worth, one of the sheep they were in the pen with, I told y'all, uh, kicked hers and he had a limp, so he didn't set up good, but he looks really good. She's in the light pink shirt there. That is Bebe's little sister, the youngest sister. But there's a couple of lambs in that class that look really good. Um, and then there is Catch in his Carhartt overalls, riding the pony at the little kid station. Ari and I last week, this is us eating on Saturday. She came with us to eat Mexican food and I'm trying to turn on her match game. She likes to play while we're waiting for things. Um, where's Kim James? Kimmy this week, they were making their Valentine boxes. So there she is making her, her bangs that get long. And then CJ went for some kind of a job interview and he said, in this picture, he looks like, he said, I look like the preacher Grandma Billy always wanted me to be. <laughs> so that's my oldest baby. And then here is our Wani, his fiance. And they got this for Kimmy's birthday. So she'll get that tomorrow. She has a big giant panda, but this is a, she has a big stuffed panda already. But this one is a stuffed panda with a baby. So she will be loving that extra much. So she's going to be so excited and they're going to be, they don't know that CJ and Wani are going to be here. And then here's Catch this week when he was with me. He loves to play with the little people, the little farm that have been around forever. He doesn't like, nobody likes the new ones. Fisher Price, I hate to tell you, nobody likes the new ones. Kids don't play with the new ones like they play with the old ones. You need to go on back and make them like they used to be because he will come over here. Every kid that comes over here plays with my old Fisher Price toys. And they say that they don't, and their parents will say, they don't pay no attention to the new 
like if they have the farm at home or um, the schoolhouse, any of the things they have, they love the little, I think because they feel better. The little people, you know, are, because they're wood, they kind of, they play with the wood blocks here. I mean, all the things like that. I think they just feel better. But I was laughing because I told Kelly, I said, look, here's me and you. Because he put the grandma and the farmer in the cow trough. I said, I guess me and you is stinky because we are getting a bath. He then put me and you in the cow trough and his little people. So let me see if I can find another one of the sheep show where they're set up this way. There we go. Okay. And here's one other view of the sheep show where they're set up facing the other direction. You can see how their legs are all fluffed out. So y'all have to tell me, um, y'all down in Australia where uh, y'all have more sheep in Scotland and places like that, y'all have to let me know when y'all show, do y'all do like that? Do y'all, because we just, back in the 80s, we sheared everything down just real tight, all the way down to their hoofs. I mean, there was no fluff left. And now they have all this fluff down at their feet and they're always picking it out. And every day they work on this hair because this hair is supposed to look good or something. I just found that to be the strangest thing ever. But they were at the fat stock show and the weather's always terrible for the fat stock show every time. So, um, and now I remember that because I forgot that last week. Okay. Um, oh, and I found this fascinating, y'all. Sue is up in Wisconsin. And we were talking last week about, you know, we just don't have the things to treat all the roads down here. We just don't. Uh, they try to do the overpasses and, you know, major things with sand and stuff. She says in Wisconsin near her, they treat the roads with cheese brine. The brine, the leftover salt stuff for making cheese. She says it's a waste product and it's environmentally friendly. So I thought that was fascinating. Um, oh, Giselle, welcome. Oh, Carla, I was going to try to find a pic of James Williams and I together. Welcome, Giselle. She is new, or Giselle, and just found us. Let me see if I can find one on here while we're talking of James Williams and I together. Maybe. Where we're standing up. be the one right in here somewhere where we're right by Keeley's barn but maybe not no 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 should be right around in here he's sitting down in that one Well, that one, he's trying to smile. He looks kind of like a serial killer, but I don't. Okay, here's one where the girls are babies, but he's leaned over. We're at the Gaylord. So that's him, and that's me before I let my hair go white. That was back, um, well, Akima's turning eight, so she was two. So that was, what, six years ago? There should be another one where he and I are standing together by the barn. So he's bending over and we're all bending over in these. Because we try, usually we're in them with the kids and so we're bending down to get on the same level with the kids and then you can't tell how tall he is really. Well, y'all, dang it. I planned to find this before we started. And you see, I forgot. Now what'll aggravate me is the minute I open this back up after we quit filming, I'll find it. Okay, here's one. Um, there's usually one of us, but okay. This is in 2019. I just started, started letting my hair grow long. So of course he can't stand the sun to be in his eyes. And we were, I don't remember what we were there for. 
I don't remember if that was a cornhole tournament or what, but that's by um, the old, an old barn, an old uh, shed on Keeley's old place. So there's one of us that in 2019, I guess is that one. Like I said, the problem is all, the, all these were always all bent over trying to be the same height as the kids. So that's where we're having, having a problem. Well, I see these and I want to go cut my hair off again. Oh, and then go back to Nola and hang. I should not be flicking through these pictures, y'all, because now I'm wanting to go do all the things. Shoot. Here's one of us going about to go into the show. We're going into the movies. So, there's a couple of us together. I hope that helped. Um, I've tried to get him to come get in the pictures, but he won't. Gina, men do need granimals, 100%. They need granimals. Y'all remember those? When you could like match this tag and this tag, and if the tags are the same, you knew they matchy matchy. Men need some granimals. Now you said it come out pretty good because you know he just wears jeans. So, you know, just about anything goes with jeans. But if it goes beyond that, he needs some granimals. Rewinding the TV, Heidi, that kills me. Kills me because he'll ask me what they, he'll say like, what's going on? And I'm like, well, they just showed da, 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 da. So I'm telling him, right? And he goes, that's not what happened. And so then he'll rewind it to find out I was right. That makes me nuts. Just believe me. Um, and yes, Karen, I have tried to get him to stick his head in and say hi, and he won't. Um, and Nancy, I didn't think that hydrangeas would grow as far north as Wisconsin. I didn't realize that. My grandma used to have beautiful ones when they lived out of East Texas, out at Rusk and around there. They do so good because they have that, um, the soil's kind of sandy and they like it. It drains good. The soil drains good and they like it. But um, I didn't know that they would grow that far north. They're so fragile. So you shocked me. Um, Vicki, I do have some noise canceling headphones that I used to mow in. And I do still have them, and I will probably have to go to wearing them when he's watching the TV. Because my ears are sensitive. Like, when he goes to the movies, like, okay, we go to the show, right? And you go in there, and he likes to go in the SDX surround sound, which means I'm going to be deafened, right? So what I do is I take my little, you know, your iPhone has, it comes to little white earbuds. I put those in my ears like this to dampen down the sound. Because if not, it is too much for me. I cannot deal with that loud a sound. It hurts my ears and my head. So I put my headphones on. He says, yeah, you look like you're special in here with your headphones on. And I'm like, I don't care, it's too loud. It is too loud for me, I cannot take it. So yes, I'm sure I will have to go to wearing my noise canceling headphones as soon as he retires. Benita, we are not used to the cold down here. We are not, it's supposed to be freezing again tonight and we are not used to it or ready for it. It was so nice a couple of days this week. It was kind of rain, we've got a good bit of rain. But like one day I did get to go walk outside, the other days I've had to exercise in the house. But we are not geared for it. We just are not. Everybody just stay home down here. Um, Yes, Charlotte 52, please, if you think I missed something, always say, because I have missed things and found it when I've gone, you know, when one of y'all would say, when I show it, they'll say, oh, hey, and you didn't, you know, there's a couple that you didn't, you know, do the second leg on or something. So if you see something you think is off on one of my pieces, please don't apologize, ask me, and then I can go double check because y'all have saved me time and time again. Okay, Barb says in New York they have had the negative four wind chill, and I'm just gonna tell you right now, no. No. Nope, I'm a hard pass on that. Mike and Justin are gonna go to Toronto at the end of February, and I love Toronto. I love seeing Casa Loma. The Chinatown there was fascinating. Um, everything was so beautiful and clean. The falls, Niagara Falls are gorgeous from that side. So I loved it, but we went in August. Now let that sink in. August. End of summer. August. Right? I had to go buy me a coat. 
I had to go in the store and buy a coat because I had brought jackets and sweaters thinking that I could wear a t-shirt and a jacket or a t-shirt and a sweater and a jacket and not, and this would be okay. It weren't. I was freezing, thought I was going to die. It was terrible. I thought I was going to die. It was so dang cold. Awful. I think that was the trip I had to buy the coat. It was either that trip or the time we went to Pennsylvania. But whichever one was in August is when I had to buy the coat. But I think it's when we were in Toronto. I thought I was going to freeze to death and die. So the negative four windshield is not for me. Um, Charles, yes, marriage is tricky mathematics at all times. It ain't an easy gig, I'm going to tell you right now. It certainly is not. There are days that I'm like, and somebody else say something else. Let me tell you what, you going to go get married? You don't like getting your own way? You don't like doing what you want? Okay. If you don't like doing what you want, you don't like getting your own way, run on down and get married then. Because let me tell you, that's where you're headed. You will never do what you want again. You might do what you want, but you will never do it freely. Let me rephrase that. Because there will always be a thought of another person. Oh, I want to go, but they don't like that. Um, I would go do, but they don't like that. James Williams does not like to fly by the seat of his pants. I've told y'all time and time again, he cannot change up. He left here today in two neutral shirts. There was nothing I could do. I said, don't you want to say that? It'll make it easier to wear with something else. No, this is the next one in line. And off he went. So, and but he's had, he had to match because he didn't want to embarrass the girls tonight at the bronze. Now, a kindergarten, first grade, second grader. So, I guess you see how they're going to keep him in line. Because he did not want to be embarrassed. Kathy was sweet enough to let me know that the um, Love Square is in the Just Cross Stitch February 2016 issue. So, the February 2016 issue of Just Cross Stitch, if you have that in your stash somewhere, you have this pattern right here. It is also available um, on 123 Stitch and several other places because it's by Needle Bling. It's by Needle Bling, and I stink and love it. Okay, now, oh, I'm doing pretty good. Shares from last week. I'm just rambling on and on. Where am I at? Okay. Spring is Susan Lusk. This is Spring by Bent Creek. This is my take on it, and this is it as an FFO. There you go. So Susan Lusk, if you'll send me your address. Um, Snow is Anna Jane, J-A-E-N, I hope I said that right, Anna. Anna Jane is Snow by Bank Creek. This is the one that she's got on display now, Mama does in her room. Um, Norette Herzog is Hydrangea. And this is by Sisters and Best Friends. And it is gorgeous. They're just so pretty. I think if it was me, I would push the hydrangea, the wording, down closer and not have as much of a gap. I think if you move that down 10, about 10 spaces, it might even be square that way. Nope, it still won't be square. It'd be 68 by 96. But it is gorgeous. Uh -oh. Blink's going off or something. So that is Norette Herzog. And then the um, Sunflower Angel. It says Flower Power, though, but I fancy that. Is Diane Cubido. Diane Cubido, if you will email me, Nisi Lynn at Yahoo, your address. So I can get those in the mail. Um, then we have shares from this week. We have, let me see here. Some of these I have stitched and I have loved them. write these down then it makes it easier for me to remember um, 
Okay. This is Hello Halloween by Sue Hillis. They are so cute. Look at them. So adorable. If you're interested in this one, use the word Halloween. Use the word Halloween if you're interested in those guys. It is adorable. Um, this is Heart in Hand, Wee Baby. Use the word baby, B-A-B-Y. If you're interested in that one, it's a little like a birth announcement. So cute. Um, this is Bent Creek, and I have stitched this one and loved it. Bent Creek Pumpkin Flower Sampler. Use the word pumpkin. And then this one is a beautiful JBW. I love this French Country Elephant. Use the word elephant. You ever ridden on an elephant? I've ridden on an elephant one time. It was fun. Um, but I would love to see them in the wild. But it is beautiful. JBW, French Country Elephant. And it's done with all the little um, alphabet. It's got letters and it got the letter E. And then it has all little like animals out of the circus and stuff in there. And it is all done one color. I think it's with a variegated thread. No, I'm sorry. It's with, yeah, it's all one color. So it gives you which color because here, I'll do it this way so you can't, I'm sorry, how can I do it? You can't see the inside. Here it is done in the blue for a boy. So that is so cute. Liam is what it says on that one. It's adorable. So that is French Country Elephant by JBW. So if you're interested in that one, use elephant, pumpkin, baby, or Halloween, if you're interested in that one. So I'm gonna get off here and make myself go um, finish my framing winter. And that's a lot. Oh my gosh, and I've got that on the wrong page. Ugh. Jeez. I'll move it over here in a minute. But I think that is everything I had to show y'all today. I hope y'all have a happy week and a good weekend and a happy Valentine's Day on, I think it'll be Tuesday. Um, we'll probably just stay here because, you know, everybody will be doing going out. And so we probably won't. We will probably eat in and be super happy. So y'all have a great weekend and enjoy your stitching. Bye.